Welcome back to the final day, day eight of the eight days of The Witcher. This is Sean, and the episode title is Family. That's an appropriate title for this time of year. What do you think? Yeah, it's the holidays. We're all around our family. It's gonna be. I think you guys will be seeing this right about Christmas, so we're gonna be spending time with our family. Probably just like they will be fighting amongst family. You know, it's not the holidays unless you're swinging an axe <laughs> or <a> right. sword. <laughs> well, That's guys, right. we're we're dead in rock. Uh, if you like this content, if you like shows like The Witcher or uh, Star Wars and content or uh, mm-hmm. Ted Lasso or any of those, we typically do a a weekly show. We record uh, we record live, so it's very interactive on either Friday or Saturday nights. Uh, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell so you do know when we go live. We love your input, so uh, anytime you can give us some, uh, we respond to immediately. Uh, this one here is a little different than our normal format, so we'll just go ahead and respond in the, in the comments on the actual YouTube channel. But uh, what do you say we get into some family here? Yeah, let's check out family. So the last time that we left uh, our, our heroes, Siri was on her way up to Kaer Morin. Uh, with Yaskir and uh, the dwarves um, that were accompanying Geralt. And uh, Voleth Mir, this this ancient demon witch, it seems as though she's taken a hold of Siri. Oh, she possessed her. Her eyes went like bright green. Yeah. It was uh, it was something. She walks in to Kaer Morn, and everyone's happy to see her originally. Everyone's right. like, hey, welcome home. Uh, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, this this scene opens up, or this episode opens up with. I mean, we're confused because Siri wakes up and she's back in Sintra, and everything yeah. looks gorgeous. It's beautiful sunlight. It's uh, her mentor, Malsak, her protector um, that she knew as a child all those years. Wakes her up, tells her it's the time for the um, uh, the courting ceremony. I think, which is something that we actually caught a glimpse of last season in real time. It was right before um, Nymphgard, uh, Nilfgaard attacked. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, she's waking up and she knows something's up because she's she like questioning things. Yeah, right. And uh, but everything seems legit. I mean, Malsack is acting like he did. Um, she runs into her her mother and she's immediately like apologetic. The, the way that you would treat people that, you know, have passed and you miss yeah. them. It's like seeing them again. Well, Malsack and... is like, you, you, you've lost your mind. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> He's gone insane. <laughs> yeah. So that's where Siri is, uh, at least mentally in this episode. Uh, we find out a little later. Um, but uh, yeah, so Geralt and Yennefer, they're also back uh, heading towards Kaer Morin as well, kind of on their tail. And uh, how do you Yen think explained... they knew she was heading that way? Um, I think that I don't, I think maybe I took it that Voleth Mir was kind of laying low, even though she took control of Siri, she was kind of laying low and just let them continue because Geralt tells. Um, the dwarves and Yaskir to take Siri up to Kaer Morin. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah. At the end of the last episode, so and even they're riding they were... the horse, she, she's way ahead. The dwarves yeah, are behind, mm-hmm. and that's when those embers catch up with her and basically exactly. take uh, take control of her. Yeah, um, they uh, Geralt and Yen they reach Kaer Morin, and Yen takes the time to actually explain to Geralt the the power that this witch has, which he's he knows. I mean, he knows the history of this entity too. Like she was taken the down by witchers the first witchers. Down, yeah. Yeah, so in the back of his mind, he's got to be a little bit willing to forgive Yennefer's actions here if she's if this witch is that powerful, has that powerful. Yeah, hold. basically, it manipulated her. Right. Once once he truly knew what was going on, I think he. Yeah, I think there was some, you know, forgiveness that was in, without actually saying it. I mean, he, he's a man of very little words. Yeah, and you can tell Yennefer doesn't. She doesn't beg, you know what I mean? Like, but Yennefer is is just short of begging here. She's like, we need to protect Siri. Like, she's so she wants to right this wrong, like really bad. Yeah. And she says, we need to protect Siri. Geralt looks at her and says, I need to protect Siri. It's like, ooh, ooh, burn. <laughs> that was that was a really cold shoulder. Yeah, I mean, that's a cold shoulder for Geralt. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and he's he's typically pretty cold. Yeah. Um. So oh, yeah, Siri, we... she's she's stalking the hallways, man. Yeah, we get. Well, Siri she finds that knife. Yeah, the one she found before. Yeah, she she, she runs halls. into that again. It's like, oh, then and then we well, we then we start kind of going back and forth. Yeah, is she walking through the halls at Sintra, or right. is she walking through the halls at Kaer Morin? Yeah, you know, and I mean? that's what, what we learn in this episode. That's how it's formatted. Is that basically we've got two series: the one that's inside of her mind, trapped in her own mind, back in Sintra, where things were were happy. She's under some kind of kind of spell, and the actual 
Ciri's body walking around the halls of Kaer Morhen, which is in possession of of this bowl of mirror, which yeah, and she now has this dagger. Yeah, and uh, w- well, well, we'll get into it, but good God Almighty, good golly, old Molly. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's killing fools. She's going through the hallways just well, like she's just walking into them when they're sleeping. And just... Taking out these witchers one by one. There's not many left. To no, be fair, there's so. not. And Any witcher get death. Boy, she brings the hell down on them. Yeah. Between her just walking around and what she brings. Mm-hmm. Woo. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that, that's a family outing right there. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Well, she gets to Vesemir. She's about to take out Vesemir in his sleep. But that's just the moment where Geralt and Yennefer finally break in and uh, put a stop to that, luckily. <laughs> How did they actually? I mean, she, he walked in. She realized it. And Vesemir woke up. But yeah. When, when did you still drop the dagger? I, um, I, I exactly what took place. I think Volith Mir was trying to play it as though she was Siri and she was like surprised by the whole thing. But Geralt was Geralt sniffed that out pretty quick. I think that that was a ruse that she was trying to get away with. And then she just bolts like Volith Mir as Siri just like <laughs> runs out of the room like Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> she was out of there. Okay. I, I that that little bit and snippet of detail I, I kind of forgot. Yeah. Well, Vesemir's pissed because I mean Vesemir. Not only did he almost have a well, night, all the other brothers are, are are murdered. Yeah. Oh, he he immediately drinks that Witcher potion that he takes a spinach and he's ready to take Siri down. Oh, dude, I love the look, the white face, the black coming down yeah. from the eyes. There, that is a scary look. He already uh, lost Eskel a few episodes ago, but mm-hmm. that was out of necessity. And he just lost like I don't know, maybe like three to five more of these witchers just b- by Siri's hand. With them sleeping, they didn't even have a chance, right? And he is just ready to do whatever it takes. And him and Geralt have a little back and forth, where Geralt is pleading with him, like, like, look, I know I can separate these two. Uh, you know, Siri's an innocent party mm-hmm. in this. Let me take care of let's let's take care of Volith Mir together, like I know we can, and and save Siri. Yeah, and, he tells all the brothers to go ahead and get all the the potions they need, and yeah. we're we're balking up. We're ready. We're going yeah. to war. <laughs> <laughs> Stock up, and it's cool. I love that we have this confrontation here, kind of bottlenecked in this one location where, and what a like great you know big dark gothic castle to have like this final battle with uh, this witch that's been a thorn in their sides all season. But no, we never seen. So I don't know what's if it's a, a a mind meld between something we're going to see later in this episode mm-hmm. and what's going on there. But one of series scene uh, visions was Kaer Morhen, like almost like burning. I wonder if that was a what happened there prior, and that's how the castle is the way it is now. Well, yeah, that could be because the castle doesn't seem to be in great shape. Yeah, yeah, I think it was a battle or something at it because they, they even hinted towards it. Right. Uh, that oh, it was when they remember it was uh, when Gare was bringing it there for the first time. That's She's right, like, why yeah. do I not know of this? It was because yeah. when we let someone know of it, we were attacked. Yeah. And they've never technically like rebuilt or fixed the castle. I've kind of left it uh, broken, almost like, like you know, how the witchers are themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, we have a small breakaway to uh, back to Sintra, where Francesca, this uh, sorceress elf who's uh, pregnant, had the, had the baby. Um, she, um, I don't know. They're looking to break their deal, it seems like. Uh, well, I don't like, know. You know, we're not fighters. I mean, they're yeah. they're overjoyed. I mean, all the elves are are celebrating because it's the first baby born, right? In a long period of time. Yeah. So they're all overjoyed. They're celebrating, and then they didn't. I guess they didn't show up for one day. You know, of training. Then they didn't show up for a second day. Yeah. And then they're like, you know, we're not fighters. This wasn't a part of the deal. Why are we gonna? Why are we gonna spill more blood of ours for Nilfgaard? Yeah, and the former Elven King, who's basically, I, I think he might be the father of this Elven. Uh, elf yeah, that's baby. that's what I got. Yeah, yeah, the Francesca and he had seemed to have a relationship that wasn't apparent in the beginning of the season, but that seems to be the way it is. Um, but they're ready to move on. Like, hey, let's rebuild. Like, we can start having Elven babies and start rebuilding our our people, and we don't need to yeah. go into a war, which makes total sense. But at this point, they're a little too far in, and Frangilla's not uh, not very happy about their decision. There. Well, she wasn't happy about it. But on the, on the same side, I think she understood it. I think she understood too. She didn't. Yeah. She like she didn't. She knew they didn't sign up for what they're now. What Calhir is is now demanding of them. Yeah. So they're just kind of what's what's you know the back and forth there. Yeah. Um, so back at Karen Morin, there's uh, Yen is basically she's 
like she's ready to help in any way she can. Once again, she's like without her powers, but it's like I got to do something. Well, she went to the lab, the Witcher's lab. Or yeah, like that she called it. She's just kind of trying to conjure up some type of uh, some potion that she can make. You know, she finds this rock. Yeah, <laughs> and gives it the Asgir and said, "Take it to you know to Geralt. He'll know what to do with it." He's yeah. Like, what okay then he starts you know scrambling and falling and tripping over himself like only yes <laughs> could do <laughs> right yeah it was like this big red stone that she calls a, a jasper and she says it's to to right the wrongs that have been done or something along those lines and uh yeah well i mean spoiler alert he he never really makes he never really gets the handoff to Geralt. <laughs> no guys i think we need some jasper so if yeah. you're still watching this at day eight, there's plenty of wrongs that we need righted <laughs> <laughs> while we were we'll we we'll be doing this for you guys with uh names that we pronounced wrong yeah. or storylines that we're just not aware of because there's not within the you know two up the two seasons here on Netflix. Right. Uh but if you have been watching, thank you so much for watching and follow us these eight days. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We have a lot of other projects that are gonna be working on. Uh so be sure to you know, to follow us with for some of these. If you're a Star Wars fan, Star Wars. Book of Boba Fett's coming out. That's our next project to give you kind of the heads up. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about what's happening in Sintra here. So I, I I don't know if it's this point in the story or not, but as the elves are deciding that they need to to flee, um, Francesca's baby, this new baby, this new hope eternal for the elves ends up dying. I guess stabbed in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, just straight up murdered. That's what yeah. it was, yeah. And I mean, it's devastating. It's not yeah. like that would be devastating anyway, but this was like a symbol of, of hope for an entire people. For people that haven't had hope forever. Right. So this was, this was their, you know, the launching point. Yeah. And then the, the rug was just pulled right out from underneath them. And uh, Francesca decides to leave. Not only does she decide to leave as she's leaving, she's casting spells to basically kill. Well, she didn't do that babies. there. She went to Rondan. Because it was basically oh, right, yeah. It was basically saying that someone from Rodan came in and did it. Right. So she's walking through Rodan and she's putting these symbols, like bring them on the chest of all these babies and putting symbols on these doors. Yeah. And you hear all the crying, and then she lifts her hands and drops them. And, yeah, then, and then, it's then you just hear the screaming of the mothers. Yeah. Oh man. That was that was a rough scene. <laughs> uh, I mean, it well, it, it had a very I'm going to draw a connection to because we're doing the eight days of Witcher and we have the holidays coming up. Yeah. It had a very Passover feeling to it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, we're talking wrong holiday, but I mean, it had right. a very Passover feeling to it. Yeah. Very. Yeah. That those old, old stories. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. And it's, well, it's not funny, but it's every time that there's a large thing of pain, whether it's Fragilla when she made her um, killing of the dining, the dining room table, the last episode, or it's um, it's here with uh, Francesca killing the babies and causing the mothers that pain. Every time there's a big whelp of pain, you can see Volof Mir, the witch, just like feeding off that energy. Like, oh, yeah, that, that's well, like her whole deal. Well, they address it later. Yeah. While they're actually back at Karen Morin. I mean, uh, Gerald figures it out. Yeah. And that's kind of how they, you know, they, they we finished the episode. So we're kind of getting ahead of it. But, yeah, you're, you're spot on. Because, they, like I said, that the fear, the anger, that's what's making her stronger and stronger and stronger. And that's why I was able to her to be able to basically manipulate uh, Cirilla the way she does. Yeah. So back at uh, Kara Morin, the uh, all the witchers that are left have, have, you know, done what they can do to, to gear up and, and take down this entity. Geralt actually finds Ciri in that big hall where the, the big tree was She's staring at the tree. Yeah, that had all the like the necklaces of the the former, you know, the the fallen, fallen witchers. witchers. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know, they have some dialogue there, and Volf Mir ends up doing the Siri scream, and the first thing it does, it splits open this tree, and you see one of these dark black obelisk monolith kind of looking things. That I don't know if Geralt even knew that was in no, there. No, I don't even think uh, Vesemir knew it was there. No yeah. one knew that was within the tree. Yeah, so it's like one of these special points in the world where these sources of, of like these gateways are. So it's like it's the, the first scream she does opens it up from the tree. And then scream number two, she just goes ahead and does it. And she looks at Gerald while she's doing it. It's like she knows exactly what she's doing, too. Like she, she knows. Oh, portals. yeah. She shatters it and he throws up his like field, force field. Yeah. And then it goes by and everyone does the same thing. And then they turn around. Yeah. 
and they come right back at him. So all the, the witches that didn't have the ability to, you know, the or the foresight for that to happen, right? There, there's like three or four more witchers taken out right there. I mean, we're it's getting pretty brutal. Yeah, well, brand new monsters that they've never faced before, variations that they've been coming across this whole season. They start walking through this portal, so it's like they didn't have enough trouble with with Volifmir herself. Now yeah. they have to fight these monsters in the in the hall, and that essentially like makes the uh, the other witchers that are there. That's what they're busy doing. Why Geralt and and Vesemir are are trying to take care of. Uh, well, they go know, ahead and they uh, they 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 basically capture. Her. They seal her in. Yeah. Uh, it's well, it was Gerald, it was Vasimir, and it was uh, the redheaded dude. Uh, those three of them. Oh, I forget his name. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, though. so the, those yeah. those three basically put up like a, a force field and were able to hold her there, mm-hmm. and they're talking to her. And then we let me flash to Sentra. Yeah, and we we see her hearing Gerald, so yeah. she doesn't know what's going on. She starts right. questioning things even more so. Yeah. But you know that witch keeps holding Titans up, keeps tightening up. It's funny the way they they play this too, the way they edit this because every time that Geralt's voice breaks through that illusion and Siri, real Siri, hears him during that uh, that party that's going on in in Sintra, it's like the witch does something else to distract Siri from the voice she's hearing. So it's like, um, so it's like you know she hears Geralt, but then her mother says something to distract her. Or that boy so comes up to ask her to dance, and or a boy comes up ask her to, da- to dance. Or finally, Malsak basically brings her to her parents. Her parents step through the scene, which in yeah. real life her parents were long gone and dead by this point. Yeah. Um. So for her to actually see her parents in the flesh in front of her, like really put her in a trance. Like, why would she want to leave? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, they keep on saying, "Stay with me." Yeah, stay with me. And all of a sudden, when she breaks, all of a sudden everything starts becoming like like they're being snapped by Thanos. They're all starting yeah. turning to dust. Yeah, so that's where you get you get this 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 ongoing onslaught of then there's some witchers there's some more witchers dying from the hands of these monsters. Yeah, like a couple more. You get their faces torn off and just uh, oh yeah, just straight up just bite the face and rips forward. Yeah, there was some yeah they they don't uh, shy away from the gore. It's uh, I guess it's part of their. Being on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, witchers are getting defeated by these monsters out front. Oh, and that there's this big white raptor looking thing that Dude, actually gets I thought, out. I thought of the uh the dinosaur from uh, Jurassic World. That's right, yeah. That's the first one, the one that the brand new one that they had in the yes. cage that had the ability to, to cloak itself. Right. That's the first thing I thought when I seen that thing. Uh, but you know, Geralt. As big and bad as that monster was, Geralt takes care of him, man. <laughs> he is <laughs> that's yeah. our Witcher, man. Yeah, he's the straight up badass. I mean, it's yeah. him and Vasimir. I don't think those two right there right. are like Witcher one, Witcher two. Yeah. <laughs> don't mess with those two. Every other guy will fall. Those two will wind up standing. Yeah. You get you basically the heading towards the climax of this episode, you get a push and pull between Siri and her mind and Volith Mirror as Siri. And eventually, like you mentioned earlier, earlier, Geralt gets the idea that Volf Mir is feeding off our hatred towards what she's doing to us right now. And yeah. we need to open up our hearts to love and try to reach Siri. So not only does Geralt start talking to her, but uh, Vesemir, the other witchers, they're like calling to her, like, we're your family now. Come back to us. We miss you. You, you yeah. get a real sense. They did get a good job this year of like Vesemir feels like a grandfather to Siri. You know, these people have taken her in. Yeah, like she's guys, been... almost uncles wise. Yeah. Right. Like how they were training her and how they were proud of her. And yeah, and how when she first came in, they wanted to turn her back on her. But this, just the, the amount of time, I don't think we really got a true good feeling on, on the length of time that they were actually up there at Caremore. Right. But it was long enough for those bonds to be built, for the, her to show, you know, she's not just a little princess that, you know, wants to sit in a castle all day. Mm-hmm. She wants to put in the work. There's things that she wants to learn. Uh, she's not she's not easily scared yeah and she's very 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 strong-willed so (laughs) yeah she fit in real quick once they found that out yeah and during this push and pull um yennefer she comes in the room and she's like hey i have this potion that i think will work to separate the two um gerald says something along the lines of he kind of figures out that bull mirror she's been trapped in this hut for all these years now she escaped into siri she needs some kind of vessel to go into um, and that dawns on Yennefer immediately as well. And Yennefer, without hesitation, she's like, I know what I got to do. And she 
cracks this vial open. This potion she's just been hard at work making this whole episode. She just cracks it open, cuts her wrist to do some blood magic, and steps and, forward. Uh, yeah, yeah, like she'll be the one. And, and she, yeah, she, I mean, and that right there was her redemption. I yeah. think the whole season and you know, all her issues, uh, taking Siri to Sentra, you know, she knew she knew her wrong. Yeah. And the only way for her to be able to correct that wrong is to sacrifice herself and to free Siri. And yeah, and you could tell that choice wasn't like, oh, I want to do this because potentially I'll get my powers back. That that choice was, I need to get that thing out of Siri because I care about her, and this is the yeah, only way. I screwed up. I need to get. I need. I need to help her. Right. You know, get free of what I brought her to. Yeah, and it's during the scene that we get go back to Siri's has space inside her head. This is when she's finally making the choice, even though she's got her own parents in front of her. She she chooses to go back to her new family, the Witchers, and that's when um, Volathmir kind of comes out. We see the embers again. Yeah. Um, and she, I think she enters the Yennefer, right? Yeah. She goes right in the Yennefer. Yeah. And, and, and uh, Siri kind of snaps out of it too. Like she falls back and Carol catches her and she's back to herself. But yeah, th then we have the whole like scene where they're all standing together and Siri, does Siri do the scream again? Siri oh. does something to teleport them through. Oh, I Geralt? think what it was Geralt was like, Hey, you have the power to send, uh, Volith Mir through this portal herself, so she'll be trapped on the in this other dimension. Oh, and it sucked them all through. It sucked and all through. And when she did, it sucked them all through. Yeah, yeah, because Yennefer was going, I was pulling Yennefer, and they grabbed Yennefer, and they all three of them right. wound up going through this portal. Right. Yeah. And uh, boy, this this is a hellish landscape they end up well, in. It goes to the uh, the prophecy. Yeah. That we we basically seen before, so it's it's almost a a word for word, picture for picture of the prophecy that was told to them. Uh, or told to Siri and uh, Triss. Yeah. Uh, back, you know, a few episodes ago. Right. So when we see it, it's not an unfamiliar, you know, landscape for us. Yeah. And then even when it comes to, you know, the army and everything coming towards them, it's everything we've seen. Right. Let's just, let's just check it out here. blood starry-eyed daughter of chaos join our hunt your place is among us you are ours Siri. Uh oh <laughs> dude it's it's badass because yeah as soon as they get there the witch leaves and she yeah. goes right to the horse, the guy on the horse, and she becomes the you know, she guy becomes on the horse. one of these horsemen. Yeah, yeah. And they're coming, and they're coming, and they're coming, and they're basically they're saying who they are. They were announced, and they, they knew who knew exactly who she was. Right. And she's able to portal them out of there, like without right. even opening the portal. They're holding hands. Just poof. Yeah. I was like, holy crap. And that's where they leave them. That's kind of the climax of this episode. Whatever this threat is, these this this horseman uh, apocalyptic images. I think they're called the Wild Hunt, which is yeah. uh, uh, actually the title of the third Witcher game, the Wild Hunt. Um, and uh, from my understanding, they're from this other realm uh, where they're almost this band that goes through. They have the ability to go to different realms and uh, almost like not pirates, but uh, I don't know. They they found Siri. They're drawn to Siri, and it's going to be they're going to be hard pressed to stop them from coming. Well, there's into this three realm. spheres, if I understand right. Yeah, and there must be a, you know on one of the other of the three. Yeah. So yeah, that's where we end it. So we we know Geralt finally has an idea of how um, how this is going to play out, like what all this means as far as the machinations this whole season. It seems like the, this wild hunt's involved, and he's got a new way to. He basically, he tells Vesemir like, "I gotta, I gotta split. I gotta get out of here." Um, because me and Siri need to like stay moving. Cause yeah, exactly. Just, um, but we need to hunt. get we need to get back to Nim uh to Sentra and Nilfgaard. Yeah, because we have Frangilla there, and the White Flame has shown up. Yeah, and they're walking here. Uh, Frangilla and Kahir are walking behind them, and they're talking back and forth. And they're they're trying to basically sell how they're doing a good job. Yeah, and. Dude wasn't feeling it. He was like, you're so full of crap. He's the one that killed the baby. Yeah, because they basically, they take credit. 
and they're like, yeah, yeah, we did that. You know, it had to be done. And he immediately calls them on their, on their BS. And he's like, oh, it's disappointing that I'm not going to be able to trust the both of you from now on. Uh, so that's not very good for, for Jilla and uh, Kahir from now on. We'll see where they end up. <laughs> well, they both get they both get pulled away by the guards. Mm-hmm. They get taken away. And this the, the, white, the white flame turns around. And who is he? It's so yeah, it's 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 uh Siri's dad. I was like, whoa, okay. Yeah. So he's the one that's hunting Siri. Uh we, we kind of had this question before we even started. Like, does he truly know her powers? Does she does he know he has she has any powers? What are his, what are his intentions? I, there's a lot of questions up in the air. So yeah, this this white flame, this Amir that we've only heard uh, you know spoken about this whole time season one and season two kahir was all this and that with the white flame last season and frangilla and kahir both Nilfgaard, they're all about this white flame amir he's finally showing up he's finally coming and it turns out to be the same dude that was a hedgehog back in season one it's serious yeah. dad um that was all involved with the child of surprise and and with Geralt. and i'm wondering is this the same exact guy or is this some other entity why, that's taken the form of this guy why would he attack uh Centra, right? If, I mean, well, why would he not just kind of show back? I mean, I know, no, her grandmother and him weren't on the best of terms, but it's it's his daughter. Yeah, exactly. And she wasn't claimed at that point. No. So why would he go in there destroy? destroy? I mean, he could he could walk in basically tell her who he was, and he could he could have very well just walked out with her. You Plus, know, what by I mean? all accounts, he and the blonde woman that was Siri's mother have supposedly been dead all these years so it's like if they weren't dead where have they been this whole time a lot of questions going on as yeah. far as this reveal there's things that we just don't know because we're not that deep in the lore all right but uh maybe we'll find out a little bit more in season three there we go okay let's do this here what are your you know your reaction to the, the season as a as a whole um i thought i thought the pacing was a little quick honestly i mean i think they could have stood to stretch it out to a 10 episode arc even though you know it's during the holidays so shorter episodes for you and i to cover it was more convenient but sometimes it felt like they kind of skipped certain parts of the story in in, you know for expediency's sake which you know to be honest that's kind of how season one was as well but i do prefer i'm glad that we didn't have to deal with the the time skips and jumps and going back and forth in the in the timeline like we did last season I think if you would have added that caveat to this season, it would have been a lot harder to wrap your head around. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, uh, sometimes more episodes make it easier. Like you won't get as many like dense. Yeah. Like, the last two episodes here were so super dense. They were. Yeah. And you could have added two more episodes and kind of let that let it breathe. Sometimes mm-hmm. if they're too dense, that they don't have the effect on you just because they, they don't have that time to go ahead and breathe and, you kind of just let the storyline set in on you. Like when we first uh, met, like I, I kind of felt a little underwhelmed by right. the last episode just yeah. because it, and it's mainly just because of so much. It's yeah. like you were getting so much at a short period of time and you're like, okay, how are you digesting this? And then it's over. And you're like, okay, now I got to stop and think about what I just watched. Cause there was so much there. And there are so many characters that only now in episode seven and eight was I really kind of getting a grasp of like the character names, the character locations without and the characters are able to whip back and forth to different locations so easily with, with portals and stuff. Yeah, that sometimes it's a bit difficult to get a, a setting and a time and place on things. I mean, how important really is Triss to Tessaia? I mean, right. what, what what is that connection? Yeah, what is the importance now of? Uh, to say is sitting on you know the main seat at the, at the with the brotherhood because it was she was sitting amongst i think other kings yeah at that point and there was a decision made about going after uh going after uh siri it's om- it almost feels as though this is a show made for the fans of the witcher that already know the story because when you like you and I are coming in and we're for, we never played the games, we never read any of the books. So we're like playing catch up the whole time. Like we're trying, we're trying to like, you know, follow along as the story's progressing. But sometimes it goes so quick where you and I are kind of breathless just following a, along the, the plot and, and the overarching big broad picture story of this thing. Um, but that being said, it sounds like we're coming down on it. Great oh. characters, great acting, 
great fight scenes, the choreography, great special effects. Like I couldn't peel myself away from it. I mean, yeah. the way it's shot, it looks beautiful. Yeah. I mean, even, like I said, it doesn't matter the actual scenes. You always know what's going on. It's always very clear. Right. Um, it looks like 90% of it's shot on location. I love Vesemir. I love the new characters that were introduced. Of, oh, I'm so glad Vesemir was not played by Mark Hamill. Yeah, me too. I mean, I thought I wanted him to, be, to play him, but it would have pulled me away and pulled me out Yeah, of The Witcher. So, I mean, they, they, they picked a great actor to, you know, to play him. And even all the brothers, all the Witchers, mm -hmm. I mean, they were all, I mean, even a lot of them played like really small secondary roles. Yeah. They were all fantastic in the parts that they did play. The monsters that Geralt fights, each one is unique. Each one is incredibly done and look like look crazy. Each one of them could be the big monster of the whole season, but yeah. the Geralt's taking them down one by one per episode. I no... love this world, I, yeah. and I can't wait to, for season three. I just hope that it doesn't take another you know two years between the two like last time. I, I you think know... a part of that may have been, I, I don't know this for certain, but it may have been a COVID situation yeah. as well. Right, but uh, yeah, I hope, yeah, I hope we don't have to wait that long because I know we talked about it before they're they're working on that prequel, right? That's gonna be happening. So is that gonna fill the gap? Are we gonna wait two years again and then that gap is gonna be the prequel? You know what I mean? But it would put us back in the world of The Witcher, but it wouldn't yeah. give us Geralt. It wouldn't give us Vasimir, uh, Yennefer. It wouldn't give us all the characters that we have grown to love. Right. I'm I am also of two minds of it too because if it actually takes two years to make the show as good as it is as far as the production of it, mm -hmm. then I don't want them to shorten that either. Like you know, if if it comes out in a year from now but it's not quite as good, then that's not really a win either. Yeah, so, don't rush it. Put the time yeah. into all the you know the visual effects, right? Uh, everything. There, there's a lot that's that's got to go on even on green screen uh, in this show. And you're working with uh, Henry Cavill's schedule, which this guy's a movie star. Like, he's a big Hollywood blockbuster movie star. And you've got star. him in a TV show on Netflix. Right. And granted, he loves it. He he, yeah. want, he wanted this role, but still, you're fighting his schedule. I wonder how long they, uh, they can have this run. What do you think this one says? There's a lot of lore behind it. Do you yeah. think it's going to run as long as, say, a Game of Thrones type uh, situation would be? Just looking at news around this, I think their aim is seven seasons. That's Which fantastic, would, but they I mean, they can't wait two years in between every season because at no. a certain point, I mean, Harry Cavill is going to get older. At I mean, a certain Witcher, point, the uh, Geralt's going to look like Vesemir. Yeah, <laughs> but what if, oh, what if they did something like that? What if they flashed forward and he became mentor? Yeah. Oh, dude. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. No. That 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 little idea I got there sounds sounds fantastic <laughs> by itself. That's, a, that's something we haven't been able to do a whole lot this season. We haven't been able to figure out kind of what's going forward or, yeah, you know, write the next show like we kind of, well, well I, you know, famously you're, did you're, on Ted Yeah, Lasso. you're good at doing that. <laughs> Fan um, fiction. Th that's going to do it for the eight days of Witcher. Uh, we really appreciate you guys joining us here. It's been a little breathless here uh, doing these review shows uh, day by day by day. Uh, we're coming up to Christmas time, so Chris and I are going to take a well-deserved break, I'd say, at least a week here uh, before Boba Fett shows up. But yeah, once again, we really appreciate you guys joining us. Be sure to check us out on YouTube. Uh, go and check out the other shows that we've done over the last year. Uh, the other review shows, the other after shows. We do trailer reviews too. So if there's big trailers that drop, we do reviews of those as well. And check out dadandrock.com for everything else that we do. There we go. What do we do right about now, Sean? Toss a coin to your witcher. Hopefully we'll see you before two years from now.